Hi everyone. So now we start the discussion of uh, uh, approximate second order method. So uh, methods. So after the last video, we discussed Newton's method, and we highlighted two uh, problems with Newton's method. One is comes from an optimization perspective, and the other comes from a computational perspective. The one that comes from an optimization perspective is that in Newton's method, we jump directly to the zero gradient point or to the critical point, And that point is, is more likely to be, uh, for the case of deep learning with large parameter space, is more likely to be a saddle point than a local minimum. And the other from a computational uh, perspective is basically inverting the Hessian, right? Now let's remember in the first place what was the motivation of second order methods is basically to speed up the stochastic gradient descent, right? So one of the early methods uh, that attempted to circumvent the challenges with Newton's method and at the same time provide the advantages of speeding up uh, gradient descent is basically called steepest descent. And the idea behind steepest descent is very simple. You compute the gradient direction as, as you would do with, the, with normal gradient descent, but you don't take a fixed step. Instead, you do a line search, right, for the minimum cost along the direction of the gradient, right? And so, so basically you solve for, so instead of computing the Hessian, Right? Instead of relying on the Hessian, you are implicitly relying on second order derivative information by first computing the first order derivative, which is the gradient, and then you do a line search along that direction for the minimum cost. Right? So you determine the direction and then you search only in that direction. Right? So let's say I am in a two dimensional parameter space, the gradient, so let's say the function looks like this, the gradient at this point is here then I do a line search along this, along this line for the minimum point along this line, okay? So, so I search only in the, in the gradient direction, okay? Now, typically this line search, what it would do is that basically it will, it will assume that the function, <clears throat> that the function has convexity in the direction of the gradient, right? And it will look for a critical point along the direction of the gradient. So basically it will, it will find the point theta star here where the gradient along dt, so this is the t uh, iteration, uh, the gradient along the dt equals zero, right? So the dot product between the gradient of theta of the cost function evaluated at theta star at which we stop after the teeth iteration times, uh, sorry, dot product with dt, that will equal to zero, right? Now, basically the gradient at the new point is what determines the new direction for the line search, right? So that's dt plus one. And hence, a property of steepest descent is that the directions of consecutive time steps are orthogonal to each other. Okay, so intuitively you can think that this orthogonality is a good thing because I search along a completely different, so I found the minimum in one direction and then I start searching in a new direction to find the minimum along the new direction, okay? Now let's see how this works. Let's see the, the, if this intuition really holds or there is a problem with it, okay? So to evaluate it, let's, let's discuss the desired behavior. So the best we could hope for from a method like this is that basically if the function is quadratic, why quadratic? Because the maximum or the highest order derivative that we are considering in this method is a second order derivative, right? So quadratic function, all the higher order derivatives than second order are, uh, are basically zero, right? So if the function is quadratic, meaning all these derivatives that we are neglecting are not there anyway. So our approximation is exact. So what we are hoping for is that we don't repeat the calculations, meaning that if I have a, a, a k-dimensional space, right? So let's say 
k here is the number of dimensions right dimensionality so if i have k parameters or a k dimensional parameter space then if i find a minimum along one direction i don't want to go back to that direction again okay so the best we could hope for is that in k iterations i can find the optimal point because in one iteration i can find the optimal point in one direction and then I search for an orthogonal direction. So basically the K iterations correspond to basis, the K basis of the, of the parameter space, right? But is that really happening or no? So the key to this is this Q1 or question one here, right? So after finding the point with the zero gradient projected along DT or D1 here for the first iteration, when we search along the, the next direction, are we preserving the minimality of cost along the old direction or no? Right, so I have my first iteration, I found the minimum along D1. And then I find D2, which is the defined by the gradient at theta star 1. Right, and D2 is orthogonal to D1. Now when I'm searching along D1, along D2, Am I preserving the minimality of the cost along D1 or we are undoing progress made in the first iteration? And the answer is basically that we are undoing progress. Why? Because how to answer this question, right? So how, how are we, uh, when do we say that we are preserving minimality along the old direction, right? We say that if the gradient along D1 is not changing while I'm searching along D2, right? So it's not enough that D2 is, it's not actually the, the key property is not that D2 should be orthogonal to D1. The key property is that along D2, the gradient along D1 should not be changing. So that the cost would not change the minimality of the cost at the point theta star would not change when I move along D2, right? So, <clears throat> so basically, how do we do that? The change in the gradient is defined by what? Change in the gradient is second order derivative information, is defined by the Hessian, right? So the change in the gradient Along D1 is defined by H times D1, the projection of the Hessian along D1. So what you really want to have is that the projection of the Hessian along D1 is orthogonal to D2. So that when I search along D2, right, I'm not changing the fact or the minimality of the cost at theta star along D1. So that I don't have to search along D1 again, right? So from here and how to do that, right? How to have this property, that would be the topic. From here, we will start the discussion in the next video. Thank you.